So. Right. So, uh, a lot to do, and we should uh, mention it's a two-year commitment. It is. Delegates. You know, it's, it's, uh, you're expected to do mm -hmm. some work. And this is why it's important. I mean, when you think about caucus, um, the national media, and I guess the local media too, has fed us this line that it's about the straw polls. You know, yeah. you go, you put in your presidential preference, and it's, I don't know if they'll I, do a it's governor Iowa preference that's this done year. it all too. Yeah, yeah you know, and governor and, will, yeah. And so, who wins that? That's what we're excited about. Well, it does nothing. You know, let's say that your guy or gal wins the primary, or not the primary, wins the straw poll at the caucus. That does not give them the nomination. You know what gives them the nomination? The alternates and delegates that you elect to elect other alternates and delegates until they go to the national convention and they endorse somebody. So in other words, the straw poll is just sort of there to, to see who the caucus goers are mm -hmm. maybe favoring. But those people aren't necessarily the delegates that will end up at the state convention in May. Right. Um, I think back to 2010 when uh, the Republicans had uh, Marty Seifert and Tom Emmer mm -hmm. running for governor. And Seifert won the straw poll, and Tom Emmer yep. in May ended up winning the nomination mm -hmm. because he got the support from the delegates right. to give him the endorsement. Yeah, and it's a fine difference that, that we really need to understand why we caucus. Because if we look over at the DFL side now, they, they went through their uh, uh, conventions, right? And they nominated Margaret Anderson Kelleher, right? Oh, for governor. Yeah, yeah. for governor. And then decided, oh, uh, Mark Dayton's going to jump into the primaries, and he caused this nasty, ugly battle. And eventually, through the primaries, came out the winner. Well, so it, it, it shows us that if we don't abide by what our alternates and delegates say, A, we isolate them, but B, we're really undercutting our grassroots people. If we want to make a change, and this is the crux of it, that we have these people in Washington, in, in St. Paul, in our city councils that have been abusing power for decades. Yeah. They live there. That's their retirement plan. Maybe not so much at a city level, but it, it's part of it because, you know, they get the They the get a para account stuff. no matter what. They do. And so they stay in power because people don't show up at the grassroots level to unseat them, and they can just perpetually run, and that's what can happen with this. And with a primary system is you get the same old guy. That's why you got a Lindsey Graham down in South Carolina Lindsey that can Graham always history. run because he's got the money and he's got the power to well, plus, stay in yeah, office. Plus, in a primary, uh, people who are not of his party can vote. Yeah, and we have that in Minnesota too. I mm -hmm. can be a Republican and vote in the DFL primary. Yeah, which is an, and, and both sides do it. Um, oh, yeah. you know we're we're dealing on the Republican side with a very open governor's race. Yes, and you've got some candidates that will abide by the endorsement. Mm -hmm. Some said they're not going to. Some I would argue one or two of them don't even care about the endorsement. Yeah, so. It really does undermine that. And my advice, too, is if you can't win over the activists, the grassroots people, the people who show up to conventions, pay money to go to them, yeah. what makes you think you're going to <laughs> be, you know, what makes you think? I mean, it, it just, it, it, the primary system benefits the person with the money, with the name ID, um, mm -hmm. and it, it does undermine. And it is sad to see that uh, so many states have abandoned, and there's been talk here in Minnesota about mm -hmm. abandoning. Like, I think it's us, Iowa, North Dakota, Nevada, Wyoming. There's yeah. a hand, there's maybe a couple others. It seems to be in the West and Midwest, there seems to be caucus states. I think Missouri still is also, but mm -hmm. um, um, the, the, the caucus is unfortunately a dying system. It is, and, and like I said before, it undercuts the grassroots. It allows power to stay in power. It allows money to gain power and stay in power. And you really do cut out the chance for a little guy to be able to come in. Did you notice that? A little guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to come in and, and get into office and do the work of the people because 
no one is going to come out and vote in a primary for a guy that doesn't have tens of thousands of dollars to spend on a primary race. Whereas if you go to a caucus and you go up through the convention system, you are allowed the opportunity to hear these people speak, to see them and learn from them and understand what what they want to do, what their morals and convictions are before you cast a vote for that person. And it's not always about the money and it's not always about the power, but it's about that in primaries 100% of the time. And that's where you get the broken system with all these people accepting all these millions in lobbyist money because that's why they're there, that, money and power. Yeah, and super PACs and everything else that came about. Um, yeah which is a way to get around campaign finance laws, which is fine with me. You can junk them. We have a First Amendment right to petition government, don't we? Yes, we do. To me, campaign finance laws limit our freedom of speech. Um, you know, the thing about a caucus, too, uh, you know, um, how, when, when somebody comes there, they, there is a caucus convener. Yes. And that is a person from your precinct. Mm -hmm. the, one of your neighbors, I mean, I've done it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> quite a while and ever since I moved yeah. back to Crystal it seems like uh, so you will have a convener that sort of runs the caucus uh, what are the responsibilities of the convener what if somebody's interested in that uh, what does the convener do there's a convener they, they, they do train you to do it yeah but what is the responsibility of that convener well it seems maybe overwhelming because you're there in front of everybody and you're kind of running the show <laughs> and it's really not that difficult because there's usually a script that goes along it with it from the state party and they uh, they lay the whole thing out for you and you will you know welcome everybody have them sign in uh, you'll say the pledge say the pledge depending on, on yeah, well, maybe convener. The yep. um, often there will be letters from the different candidates that are running for either president or governor or whatever, and, and they'll read those aloud, or if somebody has come prepared to speak for a certain candidate, they'll, they'll allow that. Um, then um, they will go through and, and talk about um, who wants to be you know, an alternate and a delegate and, and precinct captain, secretary. They'll go through the different offices and tell you a little bit about each one, and then they'll take votes. On, it's usually not too big of a uh, competition. Sometimes among delegates and alternates it can be, uh, usually not for precinct captains. It, yeah. It's really hard to find someone to stand up and, and be willing to talk to their neighbors sometimes, which is, is kind of shocking, seeing as how we're all so upset with the way that things are in government, but you know, so many people are unwilling to take what amounts to maybe five to ten hours a year to, to perpetuate hmm. liberty. Hmm. Yeah, so then uh, uh, when you do through all the niceties, mm -hmm. you get into the straw polls, you get yep. into the resolutions. Yeah. Um, and caucus can go on. Uh, when I was a convener in 2008, I think two hours yeah. it took. Because, I mean, <laughs> people came... Well, I had a full room. People mm -hmm. came with resolutions ready. Yep. People came, and we had each one of them. Has, there is a fifteen-minute time limit on debate, by the way, but yeah. uh, per resolution, so you right. could be debating for a while. Uh, straw polls are taken. They are counted by two. Two people have to count mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure those do get reported to the state. You, you're required to do that, I think, by seven. Seven o'clock, by the way, is when they usually start. By seven forty-five. I believe you have to take the straw poll. So uh, if you are interested in being a convener, and, and maybe I would argue for people the best thing to do is attend a caucus first. Yeah. Volunteer to be a convener. Some people like yep. me never had that luxury. <laughs> but, you know, if you can uh, do that, um, and then if you want to get involved further, be a, a convener or something else.